Hey y'all! In this video, we're going to take a large step back, get back into some of the basics, and attempt to define some common terms and phrases that are used in C and C, both on the CAD CAM side and on the actual machining outdoors on the CNC router side. In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between 2D or two dimensional, 2.5D or two and a half dimensional, and 3D or three dimensional vectors, models, and carving. Let me start by saying that this applies to all software and most CNC routers. Some of this terminology may have slightly different definitions on the machining side, and some will have wildly different definitions on the 3D graphics side. But when applied to CNC routers in a CAD CAM environment, these definitions remain consistent. So let's get into the easiest and most basic definition, and that is the 2D or two dimensional. Right here in my Vectric software, we have two different views of our piece of material, one being the 2D view, the other being the 3D view. There is no two and a half dimensional view. You are either looking at the 2D vectors or you're looking at a 3D model projection. There is no in between. Now that's the first hint right there in that when we're talking about layout and the CAD side of the house, 2.5D or two and a half dimensional carving and cutting exist only in our mind. It's only in our brains right now. You cannot draw a two and a half dimensional vector. The two and a half dimensions only comes in over on the tool pathing side in our preview. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. On the CAD side, two dimensional is any vector we draw because the z axis is not involved. These exist in x and y only. We can't turn this up on its edge. We can't see a difference in height. These only indicate the directions our x and y axes are going to move. I'll jump ahead slightly to say that in three dimensions, the z does enter into it. In the case of a 3D model, if we go over to our 3D view and we tilt it up, let's put it along our x. Now, let's put it along our y to bring it closer to us we can see the Z does enter into it, which gives us this hemispherical shape and creates the seam and the stitches in, in this case, the carving of a baseball. So the Z is a part of the model, a part of the drawing, if you will. But over on the two-dimensional side, it isn't. It's indicated in various shades of gray to just to give us a visual indication of what this represents. You'll also notice that I have a 2D vector right here next to the model and another 2D vector out here a sixteenth of an inch away from the model. That's just for machining purposes so that I can cut out this model after we're finished carving it. Two and a half dimensional vectors don't exist. Again, these are all 2D vectors here. Two and a half dimensional enters into it over on the toolpathing side. So let's go over to the toolpath tab. You can see that I've already got some toolpaths calculated to demonstrate the various strategies and the various definitions of these toolpaths. 
Now right off the bat we'll look at this toolpath right here, which I've named center hole. This is a hole that's to be drilled in the center of these vectors here. Imagine a compass face or a clock face. This is a two-dimensional cut. Now if I look at the toolpath, because I'm going through three-quarter inch thick material, it may take six passes to do it, but the end result is going to be a two-dimensional cut into the material. And I'll go ahead and preview this toolpath now, and you'll see that that's exactly what it does. It's a two-dimensional cut that left no relief carved into the surface material. It defined the inner perimeter of the material. That's a two-dimensional cut. We'll go back to a straight Z view, come out of my preview, go back to the 2D view. The same is true with this vector out here. Now that is our profile cutout, and I'm going to save that for last, but it as well is a two-dimensional cut because it leaves no relief on the surface. It defines the outside perimeter of the part. Those are the most basic cuts, most basic tool paths that we can create are two-dimensional. It may take several steps to get down and cut through the material, but that is considered a two-dimensional cut. A pocket, on the other hand, is a two and a half dimensional cut. Now let's go back over and look at our pocket tool path which uses this vector here. This is a two dimensional vector, but this is where two and a half dimensions enter into it. It's come out of our mind and it's gone into the physical drawing here because up here in our pocket tool path I have set a cut depth of an eighth of an inch. That is going to create relief on the surface of the material. It's two and a half dimensional and not three dimensional for one reason only. And that is because the bit is going to plunge down to a specified depth and stay there. Then the X and Y are going to take over and finish the cut. If we close this tool path, and go into our preview window, and I turn on that toolpath, we can kind of turn it up here, move in, and we can see that we're going to have a plunge move into the center, then the X and Y are going to take over, and it's going to step outwards to pocket out that material, then finally up here, retract out of the material. It will carve a relief into the material, but the X and Y will do most of the work. Once the bit plunges to a specific level, it stays there. It does not change. So it does leave relief in the surface, but the X stays at a constant depth. We'll go ahead and we'll preview that tool path. And as you can see, it's cut a one-eighth of an inch deep relief into the surface of the tool path. That's a two and a half dimensional cut. It doesn't appear as a 3D model even after we've calculated that tool path because it's not a three-dimensional cut. Now we get down here to a V-carve tool path. Here there's a little bit of a gray area. If we look at our 2D view, we have these four vectors selected. They're just two-dimensional vectors. But if we go back over into our 3D view and turn on that toolpath, zoom in over here on this one, we can see these little projections outward here. It is a two-and-a-half dimensional cut in that it's going to leave a relief carved into the surface, but it's also a three-dimensional machine movement, because in order to obtain these square corners 
here, the bit is going to have to rise in elevation as it comes up to complete this corner. This one, this one, and this one. It will stay at a constant depth as it carves out the center of the of this rectangle here. So it remains a two and a half dimensional toolpath, even though there are some three dimensional machine movements here in the corners. A V carved toolpath will not appear in the 3D view if we are to leave our preview window and come over here and just look at the 3D view, turn off the toolpath, we see nothing. It's not a 3D cut. It's a two and a half dimensional cut. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. Go back into our preview window and we'll preview that toolpath. And as you can see, we have our nice square corners, which do require a three-dimensional machine movement, but it's not a 3D model, which is why it won't appear in the 3D view unless we're in the preview window and have previewed that toolpath. Our next toolpath we have here is a profile chamfer. And this requires the use of this outside profile. And indeed, it is, if I were to double click on it, a 2D profile toolpath. But I've set the cut depth to only go an eighth of an inch. And I'm using a 90 degree V bit. Now, true, it will take two passes to reach that depth. But it's still, in this case, considered a two and a half dimensional cut. If I go into my preview window, turn on that toolpath, we can take a look here and we can see our plunge move here then a ramp. This is another one of those gray areas. Because in the profile I selected to add ramps, a smooth ramp over a distance of two inches, it's technically a three-dimensional machine movement because the X, Y, and Z are moving at the same time to plunge the bit into the material, but it's still considered only a two and a half dimensional cut. I'll preview the toolpath. It's considered a two and a half dimensional cut because it does create a relief in the surface of the material, in this case this chamfer, but that relief is at a constant depth. Once the Z gets down to the cutting depth, it stops and the X and Y take over and complete the relief that it's being carved into this surface. So, in a nutshell, that is the difference between 2.5D and 3D in that 2.5 dimensional, the Z will plunge down to a specific depth and stay there. Then the X and Y do all the work to complete the cut. I've turned on the 3D finishing toolpath for our baseball, and we'll spin this over to a straight Y axis view so that you can see that in the case of a 3D model, here is what our toolpath is going to do. The X, Y, and Z are going to stay in almost constant motion simultaneously so that the z-axis can raise and lower itself while the x and y are moving to carve our hemispherical shape here. I'm going to turn down the speed a little bit here and we'll preview that toolpath and turn it up a little bit more. And we can see 
that the z will plunge deeper over here while it's moving in x and y than it does over here along the top. All three axes are moving at the same time to give this relief, carving out this hemispherical shape while also plunging deeper to create the seam and raising up to give us these stitches here on the surface of the carving. So, that is the main difference between two and a half dimensional and three dimensional carving. Two and a half dimensional carving, the Z will plunge to a specified cut depth, then the XY axis take off, they complete the carve. On a 3D carving, X, Y, and Z work in unison, moving almost constantly to change the elevation as the X and Y move back and forth to complete the carve and carve the relief or leave the projections in the surface that we want to carve. Zooming back out to a straight Z view, almost always the last tool path I run on anything is the profile cutout. This is simply put, cutting all the way through the material with my end mill. It'll take six passes to do so. I did not add a ramp. I'll close this out. We'll go back into the preview and we'll preview that selected tool path. Double click that to get rid of the waste. The bit plunges to a specified depth in Z. Then X and Y take over and complete the cut. It cuts all the way through the material. It does not cut relief into our part. It's a two dimensional cut. So hopefully you got something out of this video. The main takeaway from this video is a two dimensional cut defines the inside and outside perimeters of the part. They don't carve relief into the surface. A two and a half dimensional cut carves relief into the surface at a constant depth. The Z axis plunges in to a specified depth, then the X and Y complete the cut. A 3D carving, the X, Y, and Z move in unison with one another in almost constant motion to complete the cut and leave a contour. That is the main difference. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. Now don't forget, today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I will be hosting a live Q&A session number 21, which we will talk about everything that I've covered in this video. I'll answer your questions and help you with any confusion you may have on the difference between two-dimensional, two-and-a-half-dimensional, and three-dimensional two three vectoring, modeling, or carving. Again, that's 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific Time, right here on my YouTube channel. And this live Q&A session is a great excuse to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, make sure to hit that notification bell right next to the subscribe button. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.